Welcome back. Right, so let's go on to example number two. So we always start off by finding our y-intercept. Okay, and for the y-intercept, we set x equal to zero. Okay. So doing that, we'll have the k of zero is equals to zero cubed minus three times zero squared plus zero plus one, right? You can see that all these three terms will go to zero, right? So the k of zero is equals to one, right? If you write that in coordinate form, we know that our y-intercept is going to be at zero, one. Okay, the next step is then to find our x-intercepts, right? And for our x-intercepts, we know that eventually we're going to set y equal to 0, right? But because our quadratic formula, right, has other parameters added to it, with this one, we are going to have to apply the factor and remainder theorem, right? And remember, the factor and remainder theorem basically just states that you need to find some x value, right, that when you substitute it into the equation, right, gives you an output of 0, right? That will then give you your first factor, right? Usually what I do is I look at my value of d, right? And I try to find the factors of that value, right? In this case, d is 1, right? And the factors of 1 are simply just 1, right? So the easiest thing to do is going to be to test either positive 1 or negative 1. If those, if neither of those two work, then we'll move on to something else. Okay, so let's first try positive 1. Ah, okay, right at the first go, we get an output of 0, right? Okay, so once you have that, you now know that f of 1, right, gave you an output of 0, right? So therefore, x minus 1 is our first factor. Okay, once you have your first factor, you then choose for yourself whether you're going to use polynomial long division, synthetic division, or inspection, right? In this case, I'm going to use polynomial long division. Okay, and on the inside here, remember you write down your entire equation, right? So in our case, this is k of x plus 1, right? Then your first factor is written on the outside over here. Okay, let's go. We're going to have x cubed divided by x that will give us x squared, right? x squared times x is x cubed. Positive x squared times negative 1 is negative x squared, right? We put brackets around that when we need to subtract afterwards, right? So when we subtract, we have uh, x cubed minus x cubed is nothing, right? Then we're going to have minus uh, 3x squared minus minus 3x squared, right? So that's basically minus 3x squared plus an x squared, right? So that is minus 2x squared, okay? Once you're done there, your next term is to drop down so you can carry on, right? Then we start the process all over again. Minus 2x squared divided by x, right, will give you minus 2x. Right, then you multiply that result with both the terms of your first um, factor, right? So minus 2x times x will give you negative 2x squared, right? And then negative 2x squared times negative 1 will give you a positive 2x. Okay, we then put brackets around that and we now need to subtract. So negative 2x squared minus negative 2x squared is nothing, right? Positive x minus 2x, right, is a negative x, right? The next term then drops down so that we can carry on, right? So now negative x divided by x is a negative 1, right? Negative 1 times x is negative x. 
and negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. Okay. Put brackets around that, then you need to subtract. Okay, so we now have negative x minus negative x, that's nothing, right? And 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay, this result of 0 here at the end is important and you must always get it so that you can know that this is your quadratic factor. Okay, so once we've received our quadratic factor, we now know that therefore f of x, right, can be written out as our first factor times the quadratic factor, which is x squared minus 2x minus 1. Okay, now this specific um, quadratic can't be factorized into two uh, factors, so we are going to have to use the quadratic formula, right? So basically, we are looking for x intercepts, so we'll start off with 0 is equals to x minus 1, right, into x squared minus 2x minus 1. Therefore, x is equals to 1, or x is equals to minus b, which is minus 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c divided by 2 times a. Okay, just to save space, let's evaluate that on the calculator. Okay, so that gives our first um, x value, right, as 1 plus the root of 2, right, and you know what's going to happen. The other one is going to have a negative. Let me just show you. Okay, right, so the answer here is 1 plus or minus the square root of 2, right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write these ones out, okay, uh, to three decimal places. So I know that therefore I have an x intercept at 1, right. I also have an x-intercept at 1, negative root 2, which is approximately negative 0 0.414. Okay, let's just check the positive. Two point four one four. Okay. So we have an x-intercept at negative 0 0.414 and another one at 2.414. Okay. All of these are approximately because it's only to three decimal places, right? Then when we write these in coordinate form, we'll know that our x-intercepts are at 1, 0, okay? negative 0 0.4140 okay and at 2.4140 right once we're done with the x intercepts we then need to be concerned right with the stationary points and we know that for the stationary points we need to set k prime of x right equal to zero okay so k prime of x is equals to three x squared right minus six x plus one okay so that's our k prime of x formula we set this equal to zero we'll have three x squared minus six x plus one Right, therefore, x is equals to let's just use our quadratic formula again. Okay, so we have negative b, which is negative 6 in this case, plus the square root of negative b squared plus sorry, minus 4 times a times c divided by 2 times a so we're going to have 3 plus or minus root 6 over 3 okay so then our x coordinates 
at the stationary point is going to be firstly approximately 1.816 okay so 1.816 and the other stationary point is going to be at 0 0.184 Okay, so 0 0.184. Okay, and then remember we always need to find the corresponding y values. Okay, so we have our k of x formula here at the top, right, which is x cubed minus 3 times x squared plus x plus 1, right. We want the corresponding y value when we have 3 plus root 6 over 3. Notice that I'm plugging in um, the full third because I want the accurate right value and then I'll round off afterwards. Okay, so that is okay, so negative 1.089, right? And I forgot what that corresponds to. Let's see, 3 plus root 6 divided by 3. Okay, this corresponds to this first x coordinate, right? So the corresponding y value there is negative. 1.089. Now let's find the corresponding y value to our other x coordinate, right? So that is going to be 3 minus the square root of 6 divided by 3. That gives us a corresponding y value of 1.089. So now we have the coordinates of our stationary points. So for the point of inflection, okay, you know that you need to set k double prime of x equal to zero, right? When you take k double prime of x, right, from um, k prime of x, right, you are going to get six x minus six, right? And again, this is quite an easy equation to solve. 0 is equal to 6x minus 6, 6 is equal to 6x, therefore x is equal to 1, right? And we know that when x is equal to 1, right, y is equal to 0, right? So our point of inflection is at 1, 0, and that is also a x-intercept, okay? Okay, now we have our y-intercept, we have our x-intercepts, we have our stationary points, and we have our point of inflection, right? Let us now find um, our intervals of increase and decrease. Okay, so remember you draw yourself a derivative number line. On this number line goes the x-coordinate of your stationary points, right? So the first one is 0. 184. Okay, and the other one is 1.816. Okay. In each interval, you need to just choose okay, a test value for yourself, right? So we need to choose a number less than 0 0.184. Let's choose negative 4. Right? And in between over here, let's choose 0 0.9. Okay? And for the interval after 1.816, let's choose a test value of 2. Then we're going to take all of these test values and plug them into our F prime formula. Okay? And evaluate the gradient of tangent lines in that interval. So we now have our 
intervals of increase and decrease, we can see that we have a local maximum at 0 0.184 and a local minimum right at 1.816. Okay. We're going to see the value of this more um, when we get into the optimization section, but for curve sketching, what it gives us is the shape of our graph, right? So we know we need to go up and down and up, right? This is the shape that corresponds to A is greater than 0, right? And when, when we check our A value over here, which is the coefficient of x cubed, we see that, yes, in fact, A is greater than than zero, in other words, A is a positive value. Okay. Now we have all our components right ready um, for the sketch. So we just need to now draw ourselves a coordinate axis and put all of this information down. Right, so now just quickly analyzing our values, right, we see that we have a y-intercept, okay, at zero one, okay. We have an x-intercept at one, okay. And our first stationary point has to be 0 0.184, okay? And that is where we are going to have our maximum, remember, right? So basically how this one is going to look is you're going to come in from the left, right? You're going to go through. You are first going to have a y-intercept, then you will peak, right? After peaking, you need to come back down. Right, and then you are going to have your minimum, and then you shoot back up again. Right, so there is the shape of the graph. So now we just need to populate it with all of our coordinate points. Right, we know that we have three x intercepts, right, we have a y intercept, okay. We've got a maximum and a minimum, right? And somewhere in between the two turning points, right, we have our point of inflection, which in our case is the same as our one of our x intercepts. So it's this point here, 1, 0. Okay. This x intercept is then going to be 2, 414, 0. Right, and this one is then going to be negative 0 0.4140. Okay, and the y intercept is at x is 0, y is 1. Okay, this first stationary point is the maximum at 0 0.184. This is 0 0.184, okay, and the y value there is 1.089, which makes sense because it's slightly above the y value of 1, okay. And lastly, this stationary point has a coordinate 1.816. And a y value of negative 1.089. So that is it for example number two. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.